to uh, do a quick reaction today. Uh, just reacting to another Pierre Polyev video that he put out uh, talking about Justin Trudeau and what's been happening in the last nine years. Nine-year-old Catalea is now worried about visiting local parks after being pierced by a discarded needle at Hollinger Park. She several, several times came up to me, Mom, there's needles. Mom, look, there's a needle. Kids don't need to see that at a park. It's supposed to be for the children. A two-year-old child found a syringe around a play structure and put the needle in her mouth around 11.30 a.m. A playground where hundreds of children play is getting a lot of attention after needles were found, resulting in some kids getting pricked by the drug paraphernalia. These photos of used needles and other drug paraphernalia scattered on the Trans-Canada Trail. South Surrey man is warning other dog owners after his Labrador nearly died of a fentanyl overdose. The dog had to be revived with naloxone after somehow inhaling or ingesting the deadly drug while out for a walk. The SPCA says they are hearing of more and more pet overdoses and they're warning pet owners what to watch for. Coquitlam RCMP are warning the public after a puppy was poisoned by toxic drugs at a local park. Wag, a four-month-old Heartland Terrier puppy, is recovering after his nose touched a suspicious substance while on a walk with his owner in a wooded area of Monday Park. Yeah, and, you know, that's the, um, kind of sums it up about right, doesn't it? Nine-year-old Catalea is now... Sorry about that. Yeah, it's just, you know, it, it's crazy. You know, you have all these different cities, even in, in Ontario. And it's just, these kids are trying to go to the park to play. When I was a kid, we didn't have to worry about that. There would be, like, people maybe would do some, like, mischievous things, and they would you know, destroy the park or whatever, which is not good. Obviously, that happens sometimes. But you never saw needles in the park, not where I lived. Now it's like every city, there's either a tent or needles in it. So now kids, obviously, they don't want to go to the park. Dogs getting poisoned. And the liberals see this. This is the crazy part. The liberals and the NDP both see this, and they don't care. They don't want to walk back their stupid idea. I understand admitting you're wrong can make you look bad sometimes, but I think it makes you look, look makes you look good, especially if you're a politician, because they don't do that very often. But instead of doing that, they're willing to see pets, kids, and everyone else potentially get hurt, get sick, or even die. And they don't care. And every time it's brought up, it's like, well, you know, but the conservatives, uh, they're white supremacists. It's like... Christian Freeland, she just did it again recently. I mean, she is just out of her mind. The whole liberal cabinet is out of their mind. They don't care about Canada. They care about themselves, their status, their future pension, probably the WEF. And that's it. That's who they're there to serve, not us. Clearly. You'll owe nothing and be happy, and well, here we are. It's slowly happening. I was just by my old place today when I was downtown and there's these little like patches of like grass where like, you know, nothing's really being used. They were, I think they were going to build like some like little like outlet mall there or something, but they haven't done anything with it yet, but now it's going to be even harder because it's full of tents and RVs even. It's just the people are just living down there because they got, they got nowhere else to go. In every ever every single year that Trudeau's been in power, it's getting worse and worse and worse. And now Canadians are at the brink of saying, "Well, how much worse can this get?" And that's why you're seeing these crazy numbers in the polls. Not because the Conservatives are so great; it's because the Liberals are so bad. They're just—it's it, mind-boggling. It, <laughs> I almost wanted to call them stupid, like the Trudeau and NDP Jagmeet Singh uh, coalition. But again, they're not stupid. They're evil. They know exactly what they're doing. They see this. They don't care. And yet somehow, even though they have an awful approval rating, they're doing horrible in the polls. We're being held hostage because Jagmeet Singh won't 
grow a pair of balls and call an election, which he has the power to do because if the conservative voted for an election, which obviously they would, and the NDP teamed up, I'm pretty sure that has enough for an election. Maybe you need a few members from the block, but that probably happens too. And they just, they don't want it. It's almost like they want to see the destruction of this entire country. They want you to go full communist. But, but don't worry, you know, everyone's going to be able to share. Well, here's the problem. When there's not enough to share, some people will starve. Some people will not have houses. When BlackRock and Vanguard and State Street start buying up all these properties, all these neighborhoods, essentially, you're going to create a class that is forever renters. There's never going to be enough places, which means the price is constantly going to get jacked up. And only the most financially fit will survive, even if you're doing okay financially. Homeless. If this keeps going for 10 years, yeah, that's what you're going to see. You're going to see places that are like just average one-bedroom apartments, even in Hamilton, going for $25, $26, $2,700. People who make $20 an hour are bringing home about, what, $2,500? So now you're going to have to work another full-time job just because you're going to need to spend $150 a week on groceries. The bus pass for a month is going to be five, six hundred bucks. Like everything's just going to keep going up and up and up and up and up like crazy until there's no more middle class left. And the unfortunate part is that it's all being done on purpose. This is not incompetence. This is evil.